scale is used to help us identify what type of solution we have. When the pH is exactly equal to 7, the term we use to describe that is neutral. If we have a pH less than 7, we say that we have an acid or an acidic solution. The lower the pH, the stronger the acid. If we have a pH greater than 7, we say that it's alkaline. The stronger the alkali, the higher the pH. Water is neutral and has a pH equal to 7. What we can see is the covalent sharing diagram of a water molecule. A water molecule can split up to form a H plus ion and an OH minus ion. We call the H plus ion the hydrogen ion and the OH minus ion the hydroxide ion. Because we have the same number of H plus and OH minus ions, the term we use to describe this is neutral. Substances which are neutral have a pH equal to 7. This is because they have equal numbers of H plus and OH minus ions. What we can see from the tug of war diagram is that we have equal number of players on either side, which means that the pH is always exactly 7. Substances which are acidic have a pH less than 7. What we can see from this diagram is that they have more H plus ions than OH minus ions. If we think about this like the tug of war, there's more players on the left hand side which pulls the pH below 7. Substances which are basic have a pH greater than 7. This is because they have more OH minus ions than H plus ions. What we can see from the diagram is that there are more hydroxide ions, that's our OH minus ions, on the right hand side of the tug of war. So what is the difference between a base and an alkali? Well, first thing we need to know is our little song, how we can identify if we actually have a base. Bases, bases, they're so great. Oxide, hydroxide and carbonate. If we have a metal oxide, a metal hydroxide or a metal carbonate, we call them bases. Now the difference between a base and an alkali is that we have to use page 8 of our data booklet to look up the solubility of that particular base. An alkali is a substance which is soluble, which means that they can dissolve in water. A way to remember this is that group 1 has a special name. Those metals found in that group are known as the alkali metals. That's because they are all soluble and can dissolve in water to form alkalis. So how do we actually form an acid or an alkali? Metal oxides, hydroxides and carbonates dissolve in water to form alkaline solutions. This is only if they're soluble, which can be represented by the letter S, which can be found on page 8 of your chemistry data booklet. Non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form acidic solutions. You need to know this for your exam. This past paper questions from the National 5 2014 Multiple Choice 5. An acidic solution contains... Now, we need to remember our key definition. We know for our, from our tug of war that we have to have more players on the left hand side than the right hand side. So therefore, we have more hydrogen ions, H plus ions, than hydroxide ions, OH minus ions. So the correct answer to this question is multiple choice answer C. This question is from the National 5 2019 Multiple Choice 12. Which of the following compounds is a base? Bases, bases, they're so great. Oxide, hydroxide and carbonate. The only one that ends in one of those surnames is A, sodium oxide. This question is from the National 5, 2016, multiple choice 8. An element was burned in air. The product was added to water, producing a solution with a pH less than 7. The element could be, well, we know that if it's got a pH less than 7, it must be an acid. We know that non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form an acidic solution. 
So if we identify the position of each of these elements in the periodic table, we can see that the only non-metal element is sulfur. Multiple choice answer, C. This past paper question is from the National 5 2018 multiple choice 8. An alkaline solution contains. Now we want to look at our tug of war. We know that an alkali has a pH greater than 7, which means that it's got more OH minus ions than H plus ions. So therefore more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. So the correct answer is multiple choice answer B. This question is from the National 5 2015 multiple choice 10. Which of the following oxides, when shaken with water, would leave the pH unchanged? You may wish to use the data booklet to help you. Well, we know that non-metal oxides dissolve in water to form acids. Carbon dioxide is an example of a non-metal oxide, so would go into the water to form a pH less than 7. Sulfur dioxide is also a non-metal oxide, so there would be, therefore would be able to dissolve in water to have a pH less than 7. Copper oxide and sodium oxide are examples of bases. What we would have to do is we would have to look up the solubility of these bases on page 8 of the data booklet. If we look up copper oxide, we can see that it is insoluble, whereas sodium oxide is soluble. Copper oxide cannot dissolve, so we'll leave the pH unchanged. So this is the correct answer. Whereas sodium oxide is very soluble and therefore will dissolve to have a pH greater than 7. It's an example of an alkali. This question's from the National 5 2015 paper, written for B. If hydrogen sulphide is not removed before methane gas is burned, sulphur dioxide is formed. When sulphur dioxide dissolves in water, in the atmosphere, acid rain is produced. Circle the correct words to complete the sentence. Acid rain contains... Now, remember, an acid has a pH less than 7. That means that they're going to have more H plus ions than OH minus ions. So, let's circle the correct words. Acid rain contains more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions.